everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 363. Today we're going to talk about Brew Crafters. This is from Dice Hate Me Games, recently released. It's a Euro style game, quite like Agricola in a lot of ways, but also very different in some other ways. And as you can see from, oh, hang on a minute, let's take, fix that. Uh, <laughs> this is an awesome box cover, so I have to show it in color. Uh, just, you know, you got your pint of beer and your little six pack there. I really like this box cover. Very stark and striking. Anyway, I had to highlight that a little bit better. Uh, so it's uh, two to five players. It plays probably about two hours. What does it say? 30 minutes per player. That seems about right. Uh, so it's a Agricola style game. Everybody's got their own brew pub and you are taking worker placement actions. There's also kind of like two different styles of work placement phases and some kind of card drafting and things. Everybody's got a little kind of technology board or knowledge board that they use to kind of, you know, experiment with different things in the lab and try out different recipes and things. So let's take a jump into how the game works and then I'll tell you more what I think about it. Okay, now here you can see everything that comes with the game and now this is pretty pretty unorganized and I apologize for that, but I just want to kind of give you a big picture of all of the different pieces and components that you're going to get in the game. Uh, this isn't very optimally organized, so you can't actually fit a five player game on a table about this size. Now the first thing to note is each player is going to get a little brew pub of their own as well as a technology track here. Now this actually is double sided. What you're seeing here is the basic side. This is the same for all players, but if we flip this over, we've got an advanced side and you can see these are different named this is dhmg1 and two and three and so on and the layout here is different there are some matching technologies from basic to advanced but the order and which players get which basic technologies is mixed up so i'm just going to show you this one for now and the other thing that you get are two workers in your color so in this case we have two white workers and then we also have shifts so in addition to the two normal workers that you have you actually start the game off with just this one brew shift so this guy is sort of a type of worker but it's really a shift that you're going to use up and then through the game as you start to get more experience and brew more batches you're going to be able to purchase uh, more brew shifts and then be able to use those the thing to note about these little dollar signs is this the amount of money that you're going to have to pay at the end of a given year and you can also see some of the pre-built buildings that you have in your brew pub already start with with some dollar amounts. So you've got one, two, three, and then four, five dollars that you're gonna have to pay at least at the end of the first year, uh, indicated by all the dollar signs on your board. So as you can see here, the game is gonna take place over one, two, three years with four seasons in each year, so a total of 12 rounds. And as you move along, there might be different things that will happen as you hit fall, you'll be able to harvest. When you have spring, you'll be able to plant uh, different goods. And then of course, once you hit winter, then you're going to trigger any winter abilities and also pay you can see you have to pay all of the dollar amounts indicated on your board now if you can't afford to pay you can actually take a loan and it's going to give you two dollars but you can't pay this loan back if you take a loan you've got to hold it in front of you and you can see you're going to lose two reputation two victory points at the end of the game for your first loan and then three for each additional after that so you want to keep that in mind it is not the end of the world to take a loan but you know you got to keep it in mind so what are you going to be doing on a turn well let's take a quick high level overview of the components here and then I'll jump into the different areas right here in this green space here you have kind of your first phase of worker placement and then you have a brew shift action you can tell that by this board here then you have different colored goods represented by cubes uh, you've got different batches of beer which I'll show you in a second different buildings you can see those right here you can upgrade buildings that you might already start with here are the recipes that are going to be available in the game now there is a stack here of recipes so you're gonna have a variety of recipes that require you can see different types of goods to score you different amounts of points and you will always have three stout uh, three porter and three ale as well in the game at all times and here we We've got a random setup of recipes you're always going to have the basic of the ale the stout and the porter in the game you can see these will actually give you uh, two victory points there for each of those that you brew and then you're going to have two more of each randomly decided and the rules do give you a basic setup if you feel like doing it that way the other thing that you're going to set up is you're going to have nine of these special employees that you can hire now you can see these also have a little dollar symbol on there so at the end of winter you're going to have to pay 
an extra dollar for each of these special employees. And these are going to give you different special abilities. So you can see some of these have the little bottle cap with the Dice Hate Me symbol on there. And those are just the suggested for your basic setup. And these have a whole variety of different special abilities. And you can see, of course, you're not going to use all of these in every single game. A lot of these are going to interact with different spaces on the board where you do the worker placement. Some of the brew reactions and things are going to change up. Uh, they're going to change up, you know, the types and interact with the types of buildings that you purchase. You can see some buildings there or the recipes that you do. So there's a whole lot of interaction and things that are going to happen uh, and you can kind of combo with with these cards. So let's take first look at the main worker placement sport and this as you can see in green. Now I have all of these available. Sometimes you might show it uh, so that only, you know, you're covering up some of these or in a two player game you may only use the one board and so on. So but let's just go quickly through these spaces. This is where you're going to be gathering resources and doing kind of your typical things. So very simply starting with the start player who's going to get this awesome <laughs> little Guinness draft looking uh, marker here. This is one of the cooler uh, start player markers that I've seen in a game. So starting with that player then going clockwise, players will take turns of course putting their workers in these different action spaces and mostly you're just going to be collecting things. Now similar to Agricola and Caverna and several other types of games, you can see some of these have these little orange arrows there and that means every round we're going to add a new set of that resource onto the board. So again, if nobody had gotten and taken the space, we'd go ahead and add three or more of these on the next turn. So this will accumulate and become more tasty as time goes by. So let's just kind of work our way up here. If I went to this spot, I can take one of these types of goods and these three goods are sort of your more rare goods. Plus you can take two malt or one hops. If I go here, I can take any two of these, or here I can take two dollars, or I can take a yeast, or I can, you know, if the Malta cruise, I can take those. And there's two special spots up here at the top. And the first one here is private investor, so you can take the amount of money that's on here and the start player marker, so you can get start player for next turn, or you can form a local partnership. Now these will be taken early in the game, and depending on the number of players, there may be a different amount available. And these are sort of like the special workers I showed you, so these will be gobbled up pretty early in the game. This is an example here. You may convert two malt or one hops or one yeast into a spice anytime and as often as you like. So you can basically convert a common resource into a rare resource. And this is a similar one. So in a four player game, you'll have both of these out. The next spot here is the higher a new shift spot. You can see it says second shift, three batches brewed, third shift, nine batches brewed. So you have to actually have brewed some batches to be able to hire your second and third shift. And remember your shift are these little guys here and you're going to use these in the shift worker placement part of the game. Now the other thing you do is of course is hire a skilled worker and that's of course uh, like these two jokers here. Uh, so you basically just take them and you just take this action and you put them in front of you and then you only have to pay for them at the end of the year. In the bottom of the board is pretty much a repeat. It's got some spots to gather to different resources and then there's another new higher new shift or skilled worker action spot there. So players are going to take turns placing their two workers on these spots. And then after that, we're gonna go into the brewery shift action phase. So this is a little bit different style of worker placement. Now in the previous phase, if you take a spot, nobody else can take it for the rest of that turn. However, in this spot, if I wanted to go ahead and process beer, then the blue player could come along and do that as well. So there's no blocking. Uh, sometimes turn order does come into play here, so you can't quite do it simultaneously, but sometimes you actually can. So there's three basic spots here. First thing is you can install new building or equipment. And here again, I've got a variety of equipment set up. Uh, let's take a look here. This one is simply the double processing system. So I can replace my existing processing system with this, or I could grab the yeast lab, or the brew pub, or the storehouse, and so on. And I simply just take that and put it on the appropriate space on my board. You can see I, instead of actually paying one dollar for this, now I have got to pay two. So you don't have to pay for these. Again, you just take them, but then you've got to worry about how much you're going to have to pay at the end of the round. And all of the rules for these various buildings are on these handy uh, player aid cards and each player will get these and they tell you a lot about these and I'm not going to go into too much detail on all of these because some of these they have interactions with some of the specialized workers and so on uh, so there's a lot of strategy though involved on the order that you select the buildings and which buildings you go for and things like that. I'm going to skip process beer for now because that's really the crux of the game. We're going to skip down to lab research uh, which is very simple. Now when you take the lab research action you're simply going to choose one of your tracks 
tracks and then go ahead and advance uh, one of your cubes along those tracks. And for the most part, the uh, first row, for excuse me, the first column here is gonna just give you an immediate thing, like take a basic ingredient, uh, take an advanced ingredient, and so on. And then once you get into here, you're gonna trigger your winter abilities. Remember, if you look back on the turn track, you can have a winter ability that's gonna go off. So you kinda wanna figure out what you want to do strategically and do this early because you're only going to have three winters and some of these do actually kind of bounce off each other so that's something you want to you know your first game you're not going to be able to really figure that out but you kind of want to get up to the second level uh, quickly so you can have some nice combos here and then this breakthroughs once you get up to here these are sort of triggered abilities so this says take any three basic ingredients when you install a new building or equipment or gain one rep one victory point for each new batch you brew so these are things they're going to give you enhancements to kind of the normal everyday things that you're doing and then once you get up into the game end these are different you know end game bonus points so one point for every two batches brewed one point for each of the six different advanced recipes so you might try you know kind of a diverse line of beers if you're going this route here uh, down there and then the other side of course has different uh, special abilities on the advanced part of the technology so the final spot for the actions here are this processed beer so you can sell, then bottle, and then optionally brew some beer, and then and or collaborate. So if we take a look over here, this is another way to get money and points during the game. So when you go and take the process beer action, in addition to running beer through your own brewery, you can take and fulfill one of these four possible uh, little recipes. So I can go and say, hey, let me go ahead and throw some of this uh, malt down here, and then maybe another player comes along and they do some hops, and then I come along on a later turn and do this, and then you can throw down a, uh, a rare recipe here. So once this is filled out, you'll clear this. And anybody that filled one of these, let's say I did the hops there, then I will go ahead and take this. So I remember that I was the one whoops, that filled the hops. Okay, so then you're gonna get the reward of whatever it says on there. So once this is filled, if you fill like these top two, you'd get two, four points, and then you can see $2 there. So it's an interesting kind of thing to get rid of some excess resources, but also it kind of gives you an immediate uh, shot in the arm of points and money. The start of the game, you're not gonna have any beer to sell, so you've gotta brew some beer. Now there is a requirement that you've actually brewed a basic batch of a type before you can brew anything underneath it. So before I start brewing this high country or this pumpkin ale, I've got to brew this everyday ale. If I want to brew this oat soda, I've got to do this simply stout before that. So you can see the requirement here is this resources here. So we've got uh, three malt and two hops and one yeast for that. And then we can go ahead and, and if we have those resources, turn those into the supply and then grab a batch of that beer. So let's say we wanted to brew the everyday ale. We'd return these resources to the supply. And you can see here, I've got a pile of all the basic batches. So I'll grab an everyday ale here. I'll grab and take that, and then I'll go ahead and put that in my brew. So on a future turn, what's gonna happen if I take that same action to process beer, before I put anything in the brew, I'll go ahead and move anything into the bottling area. And then let's say I went ahead and brewed now this Belgian quad because I've already brewed a nail and I'll go ahead and put that there. And then on a future turn, I don't even necessarily have to process or, or, or brew any beer. I can go ahead and just move stuff kind of down the line without actually making new beer. So I'll take this, move it into my truck. I'll immediately get $2, no matter the kind of beer that you get. And then now this has been sold. And then anything that was being brewed would move into the bottle. And then I'd have room now to put a new beer if I wanted. But again, you don't have to. You can just kind of move stuff down. And at the end of the game, you're going to get points for these, of course. But you don't have to have sold them. You can get points for them while they're here. But you're not going to get any money out of them until you actually move them down the line. So I just want to make a quick mention of some of the buildings because these are very important. Uh, one thing to note here is this brew pub itself. And this is similar. It gives you another spot where you can place a newly brewed batch. But instead of kind of a two-step bottling process, I can just move it from here right to the pub because you can see the visitors in there immediately drinking it. There's no bottling process, it's on tap. So you can go right from here to getting money directly. Now, a lot of special abilities and things in the games won't trigger if it goes to the brew prep and doesn't go through your processing. So this is a quick way to get money, but you might skip out on some special abilities. Now, if you want to, again, upgrade your uh, double processing plant here, this you can see gives you two spots. So you've got two brews and then two bottling lines. And so you can do two at once. So even with the brew pub, you can do a whole bunch of beer. Uh, 
the yeast lab here, you can see every time you do a research, you do the lab research to go up a technology, you get a free yeast. And then again, some of the different special uh, workers and things will interact directly with these buildings. So that's pretty much the game. You're gonna have 12 rounds. Uh, you're gonna have three winter phases where you've gotta do a little bit of payment and maintenance and management of your brewery two worker placement phases in each round, lots of different special abilities and interactions. You're gonna get points, of course, for brewing uh, the different batches here. You're gonna get sometimes points during the game. You can see these little labels here. These you actually will place onto the different recipes, at least the advanced recipes, and the first person to sell one of those recipes will be able to grab this label, and then they will get a bonus of three points for those. You've got the different uh, end game bonuses here, again, for hitting different uh, peaks on e each of the different tracks. Okay, so what do I think of the game? Well, I really enjoy the game quite a bit, actually. I think the thing that I like the most about it is kind of the mixed setup of the style of game. So a lot of people are gonna pair this immediately to Agricola, but there's some standouts uh, apart from that. So you've got your basic worker placement phase, you've got kind of the regeneration of resources or the accumulation of resources and that whole part. But really it kind of stops there. I mean, there's some other kind of loose ties, but the one thing that's really cool is these, these brew pubs here. And I like the physicality of that. So it's similar also to having the farm or in Caverna, you know, having a little cave that you are developing. But I like the physicality of seeing, you know, your business or your building uh, grow. I like the technology track. That's pretty cool. I like how, you know, you can get into the advanced and stuff and there's gonna give you lots of different strategies. So you, there's a lot to mix up. You got the different technologies, you got the different workers, you know, the way they interact with the buildings is gonna be different. There's also, I mentioned these modules here, which I haven't played with any of these, but these are like different worker placement pieces that you can add. Uh, some of these are different uh, like ways to kind of set up the game and play with different things. So you can play kind of the same core and get used to it. And it's very simple. Uh, you know, it, like when I first showed you all the pieces, I'm like, this is really going to seem like a really, really, really heavy crunchy Euro. And it kind of is strategically wise, but it's also very easy to get into because you've only got two workers, you know, boom, boom, get this resource, get this resource. I see the recipe I want to build or brew. I built, I brew the recipe and now I've got some shift action. You start the game with one shift action. And so you do that, you process a little bitty beer, you kind of move into some more advanced beer. So you can kind of see also physically and also kind of mentally your brew prob go. You've got more shifts, you get more cool buildings and more widgets and technologies, you start to brew better beer, it becomes easier to brew, you know, the really complex, fancy, hoity-toity beers. Uh, and so again, you've got that kind of reinvestment of that core, and then now you can throw, you know, different things at it, you know, mix up the recipes, mix up the workers, and all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, really, really fun game, definitely gonna stay in my collection. I, I feel like I have to give one criticism to it, and uh, it's weird because, Part of it, like if we look here at the recipes here, now you can kind of see the art on some of these a little bit. I know it's black and white, but um, you know, those are really cool. I like the drawings on the buildings. I like some of the, the illustrations on the worker cards. Again, I like the physicality of the brew pubs, but there's something about like the worker placement phases in the font. <laughs> and I don't know why, I don't usually like make a point of this, but it feels like, man, I don't know what, it's just like too sort of prototypey or something. Anyway, so that's the only kind of letdown there because the game really excels. And I think the game is, it works well with the theme. And like I said, it's got a nice simple core with a lot of complexity and variability you can add on top of that. And it's very thematic, you know, with kind of processing and, and brewing. The different special abilities are neat. You know, you get these sort of characters and these, you know, personalized workers. I always like games that have, hey, it's worker placement. But now I've got a little personal worker type of thing going on. But anyway, I feel like there's a, it's a huge nitpick because there's a lot of parts of the graphic design I really like. I love the box cover, obviously, and I love all the things I talked about, but this just, it feels like there's like, they, I don't know. I don't know what it is. There's something that bothers me about it. Like I love these little six packs, you know, you get these little, uh, these little things here. These are really cool, but maybe I'm just trying to find a nitpick just to find one. <laughs> But I would definitely recommend the game. It, I think if you're a big Euro fan, you know, you like Agricola and stuff. I, I've gotten rid of Agricola, I still have Caverna, but I think I'm gonna keep this and Caverna, frankly, uh, because uh, the game group really likes the theme. The family is gonna get into the theme a little bit more uh, with this. So it's, it's a, you know, it feels very grounded. It, it makes it very intuitive 
because you say, oh, well, I need to store more stuff, and you know, I got my storehouse. I want to process more beer. You know, I got all these resources. I need to start, you know, churning through this stuff. So, because of the theme attachment, it makes it so much more intuitive to play. And then once you get to that level of complexity, it kind of just gracefully, you know, pulls you into that. So. I don't know, I really appreciate that about the game. And it's a cool theme. I mean, it's, you know, it's a small business. You know, people like to have their little microbrews in their garages and things. So they like to do the there's like little experimenting, you know, kind of, I don't know whether it's like the Breaking Bad thing or something, but you know, people like to tinker and have their own little hobbies, right? So this kind of, it hits on a lot of those kind of different levels. So anyway, uh, definitely take a look at it and uh, Brew Crafters, thanks. <laughs>